Ronald Spears was written into the Band of Brothers script to appear as some kind of mythical, cold-blooded killer, which is true to some extent, but the series left an awful lot of detail out due to a lack of time and relevance to the story. Some people ask why I make content on Band of Brothers, as the veterans should be left alone. But as the series was and probably still is the most popular World War II story out there, I feel it's important to fill the gaps and get a lot of the wrongs right, particularly where the veterans are involved. I will be making plenty of content on Spears, as his story was fascinating. And to be honest, they could have easily made a series or movie on him alone, which would have blown Band of Brothers out of the park. I'm not too sure how he would have felt about it while he was alive, but it would be an opportunity for a budding filmmaker to produce something special. We have terrible runoffs for most popular shows after all. On D-Day, we see Spears and a number of his men from Dog Company assist Lieutenant Winters in assaulting the fourth gun at Braycor Manor. Only one of his men was killed during the mission, and he was in a trench, unlike what was shown in the series with Spears and the others carelessly charging the gun in the open with numerous men getting hit. The rest of Spears' depiction in Normandy involves shooting prisoners, which has already been covered in my other videos. In Normandy, Spears was awarded the Bronze Star and was wounded on several occasions. He was awarded the medal after his promotion to First Lieutenant. His citation reads as follows, First Lieutenant Ronald C. Spears, then Second Lieutenant, Parachute Infantry, United States Army, for meritorious achievement in combat. During the period June 6 to 13, 1944, following the invasion of the Cotentin Peninsula, France, Lieutenant Spears led his platoon without regard to his own physical condition. During this time, he sustained shrapnel wounds in the face and in successive engagements, was wounded in the hand, then in the leg, and finally the back. Despite these wounds, he refused to be evacuated and continued to lead his platoon. His conduct is in accordance with the highest standards of the military service. On return to the staging area behind Utah Beach, Spears was admitted to hospital for treatment of his wounds. On the regiment's return to England, he became a minor celebrity when a news crew interviewed him as part of a radio program sponsored by Coca-Cola, which was broadcast in both the UK and the US. The Coca-Cola company invited Spears' parents out to a special function to listen to the broadcast. It was the first time his mother had heard her son's voice in over a year. After being discharged from the hospital, he was awarded his Bronze Star along with the other recipients of medals in Normandy. As Lieutenant Spears was still not a member of Easy Company during Operation Market Garden in Holland during September 1943, and there were no controversies surrounding him, he was not depicted in the series during the replacements or crossroads episodes. He was certainly there, however, serving in battalion intelligence, which will be covered in another video. Speer's reputation in Holland changed from being the officer who shot groups of German POWs and even his own platoon sergeant to a lone wolf and cold-blooded killer. There was no doubt about his bravery or skills. On October 10, 1944, a month after landing in Holland, Spears was awarded the Silver Star. His citation is as follows. The President of the United States of America takes pleasure in presenting the Silver Star to First Lieutenant Infantry Ronald C. Spears, United States Army, for gallantry in action while serving with the 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment, 101st Airborne Division. On the 10th of October 1944, in the vicinity of Rendike, Holland, he was assigned the mission of leading a patrol to the bank of the Nieder Rhine River to determine enemy activity across the river. He reached the river bank with his patrol in the early hours of the morning and spent the entire day observing across the river. After dark, he voluntarily swam across to the opposite bank alone, where he found himself in unknown territory. He located an enemy machine gun nest an enemy headquarters, and other enemy activity near the town of Wageningen. He secured a rubber boat left by the enemy and returned to the friendly side of the river with this information. While returning to his own lines, he was wounded by fire from an enemy machine gun. Lieutenant Spears was the first to cross the Nieder Rhine River in this vicinity, and in so doing he paved the way for other patrols to make similar reconnaissances. 
the information proved of great value to his unit. His actions were in accordance with the highest standards of military service. Interestingly, Earl McClung, a member of Easy Company, stated after the war that a rumor had spread that Spears had been shot by one of his former platoon members who had been friends with the sergeant he had shot and killed in self-defense on June 7th. Perhaps Spears' greatest achievement during the war, or at least the action he is best known for, was his daring feats at Foy during the Battle of the Bulge and Bastogne in January 1945. Easy Company commander Captain Norman Dyke, after being wounded, had frozen during the assault on the town. According to Winters, he looked around for the first officer he could see, and it just happened to be Lieutenant Spears. His orders were to relieve Dyke and take over the assault. After getting the attack recommenced, Spears personally ran across an open field under fire from a German 88 to hook up with I Company, who had flanked around the Germans and were firing on Easy Company as they approached Foy. In the series, Sergeant Lipton incorrectly states, that they need to find I Company to stop the Germans from slipping away. It is true that Spears connected with I Company and returned back to his men facing enemy fire. Tragically, the officer Spears spoke with from Item Company, Lieutenant Roger Tinsley, was hit by machine gun fire and killed just moments after Spears left him. The question I have is, why was Ronald Spears not decorated for his actions at Foy? He was promoted to CO of Easy Company shortly after, but surely after already being awarded a bronze and silver star, he was worthy of the Distinguished Service Medal, which was what Winters was awarded at Braycourt Manor. To take over an assault which was in complete disarray, under heavy fire, and to personally run through enemy lines to prevent another company from killing his own men, before seeing to the actual taking of the town, was probably the highlight of Easy Company's war. In May 1945, Spears, as captain, received the Oak Leaf Cluster to his Bronze Star. His citation reads, Captain Ronald Spears, while serving with the Army of the United States, distinguished himself by meritorious service in connection with military operations against the enemy from 6th June 1944 to May 8, 1945. Throughout the Normandy Campaign, operations in Holland and defense of Bastogne, he rendered outstanding service to as a platoon leader and company commander. His actions were in accordance with the highest standards of military service. The Oak Leaf Cluster sounds like more of a token gesture to give him enough points to return home, although that was never going to be an option for him in any case. He was prepared to fight in the Pacific and remained in the Army, serving in Korea. I will cover Spears' post-World War II career in another video. Thanks for watching. Do you think Ronald Spears deserved a higher decoration than the Silver Star? Did his reputation perhaps restrict him from being promoted beyond captain during World War II? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. For the time being, the channel is back to normal. Thank you to everybody for the messages of support. I now have a Patreon page for those who wish to help the channel outside of YouTube. I will be posting my videos on Patreon the day prior to it being released on YouTube. I will also be including articles and images from declassified army records. The link is in the description. Membership will be a few dollars a month to help cover the cost of running this channel. There is also now a PayPal link in the description if you wish to donate there. Please only give what you can. I don't expect anything from anyone. I'll catch you on the next video.